Good afternoon, Bio318. My name is Helen Ballard, and I will be giving you a short history of smallpox in Boston, Massachusetts. Specifically, we will be talking about two different epidemics and two different centuries. In this slideshow, we are going to talk about smallpox, the symptoms of it, how does it present in an individual, and a little bit more about the history of it and the transmission. We will also be talking about those two epidemics in Boston, one in the 18th century and one in the 20th century. We will also talk about inoculation and how it drived the footwork to the modern vaccine for smallpox. And we will also talk about the eradication of smallpox from the world. So let's start off with a short history of smallpox. And let's talk about the symptoms and how it presents in an individual. Smallpox is known as variola major and variola minor. There are two different strains of it, which we will talk about a little later. And both of these strains cause small pustules of fluid underneath the skin with a scab layer over top and can eventually rupture causing the spread of the disease not only from yourself onto further parts of your body, such as your arms, your legs, the trunk, your torso, and even into your mucous membranes, such as your esophagus or lungs, but this fluid can also be transported to um, high contact surfaces, such as, you know, your bed, your pillows, your blankets, the your clothing, any, any items that this pus could potentially land on and potentially affect others who come in contact with it. The early symptoms of smallpox include fever, vomiting, and body aches, very similar to flu or, you know, your common cold symptoms. The moment this starts to change from, oh, hey, maybe I have the common cold to, oh, hey, I have something more, is when you start to get these pustules inside of your mouth and on your tongue. At this point, this is known as the early rash stage of the smallpox disease, and this is also the most contagious stage of smallpox. Once you have these pustules inside of your mouth and your tongue, they're able to spread not only to the outside of your body, to your mouth, your neck, your torso, up, you know, even to your arms and your legs, but it can also spread down into your esophagus and into your lungs, which are less seen by people. Once you come in contact with somebody who is infected with smallpox or you contract smallpox through coming in contact on a surface or something similar, the incubation period of the disease in your body is anywhere between 7 to 19 days. From my research, the average time is roughly 10 to 14 days. From the incubation period, from the time you start seeing symptoms to the time you are no longer showing symptoms and are, and are no longer contagious is anywhere between 22 and 24 days. Another way smallpox is spread is through moisture droplets, such as, you know, droplets from your mouth where those pustules might be. And it's more likely to spread in high density groups or in face-to-face -face contacts with people for elongated period of time. From what we know about smallpox, now there are still a few mysteries, such as where it came from. We are still searching for the origin of smallpox itself, but there is evidence that it's somewhere at least from 3 BCE, which is before Common Era. It was found in the Egyptian empires, and we have seen research or evidence showing that it has been in Asia, it has been in China, it's been in Europe, through 
many, many, many years. But at this time, we do not know the origin of it or how it started. So from from not knowing where it started to now, we've kind of gained a lot of information, but there are still the unknowns. So smallpox came to the United States in spring of 1721 when a sailor, I've, I've read mixed reviews on, uh, mixed research on this, um, it was either a sailor coming from Barbados or it was coming on imported goods into the colonized America. I wasn't able to find a consensus about how it came into the United States, but all I do know is that it did come into the United States in the spring of 1721. And it did last roughly a year and a half until the winter of 1722. During this year and a half, there were over 6,000 cases of smallpox. And of those 6,000 cases, 850 people died. The second outbreak, or the most recent outbreak of smallpox in the same area in Boston was from May of 1901 to March of 1903, so just about the same time frame as the first epidemic. Now, the only difference between the first epidemic and the second epidemic is that the second epidemic, we had a vaccine for smallpox. And because of that, there were significantly less cases and significantly less deaths. There were only 1,596 cases and 270 deaths. And of those cases that had smallpox, half of them were vaccinated. Next, let's talk about inoculation. Inoculation was created in Boston during the first epidemic in 1721. And it consists of giving a healthy individual a pustule from an infected individual or a pustule of cowpox, usually from milkmaids, to a healthy individual to build their their immune response to smallpox. It's it's from the same overlaying family of disease, but it's not specifically the variola major, the variola minor. This caused these healthy individuals to create the immune response and to catch cowpox or smallpox. However, it still ran the risks of you know, death. Because at this time, we didn't have the cure. We still don't have a cure for smallpox. All we can do is treat it. And because of this, we were able to finally find a vaccine that works. Now let's talk about eradication and how the heck we got rid of smallpox in, from the world. This started from us gaining knowledge that smallpox is devised into two different branches. One of being variola major, which is the higher mortality rate, around 30%. And then the other branch is the variola minor, with a mortality rate of about 1%. From this knowledge, we were able to devise a vaccine in the 1950s. And a few years later, in 1958, we were able to say, hey, we're going to eradicate smallpox from the world. And by 1980, we, the World Health Organization was finally able to say that smallpox is gone. Smallpox is, we, you cannot naturally catch smallpox. Because of that, the smallpox vaccine that was created in 1950 was discontin discontinued in 1982. And the only remaining strains exist in two laboratories, one in the United States and one in Russia. Thank you for listening to my short, brief slideshow about smallpox and the history of the two epidemics in Boston and how we've got to where we are today. Um, listed is my work cited and I want everyone to have a Great winter break and good luck with the rest of finals. Thank you.